Hey, Valerie. Hi. This Zoom stuff is something I'm still learning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I use it a lot at work, so I feel like I it's like second nature for me now, which is really kind of weird, but. Okay, I might be asking you for some guidance. I've never done the presenter side, so. Okay, well, it's, it looks good. I mean, I can see your, your slides and I can hear you and see you. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Cool, we're winning. <laughs> yeah. The presentation will be, presentation part will be pretty short, so. Yeah. So I have a question, Mallory. Um, do you expect the participants will be making the recipe with you? Yes. So we're going to go through this first, kind of go through the process, talk about equipment, um, and then at, you know, at the end, we'll, we'll, that's when we'll start cooking. So, yeah. Stuff. So it's like, oh, I can make the recipe too, if, if that's kind of the, the, the idea. So. Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, everyone's welcome even if they're not prepared, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. This would definitely be easier in person. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hopefully next fall we could actually do some classes together. Like hopefully by then COVID will be done. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, it would be fun to actually do some classes together. Like, cause I was last winter, kind of listening to these um, podcasts by a gal who's kind of like a consultant on local food marketing. I can't remember what her name is. Steve Strasheim thinks she's awesome. Can't remember her name, but anyway, one of the things that she talks about is doing events like classes on your farm as a mm -hmm. way for people to really feel a personal connection with you as their farmer. Um, Definitely. Yeah, that's. So then I felt like all motivated to do classes this fall, and then COVID happened. I know. I know. I had such a such a busy fall and summer planned, and then, and, you know, had had like my big um, like calendar marked up and like, I never erased anything. So like every day that goes by, I'm just like, it's weird what I'm supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, and instead I'm still in my sweatpants and haven't brushed my teeth today. <laughs> like, this whole new world. Yeah. Do we have some other folks on? See Christine. Yeah, um, at least two more people have registered. But I don't think it's going to be a huge class, which is more fun, maybe a little more social. So. Yeah. So this picture, it looks like Cortland's. Where does is it? The yeah, it does. <laughs> It's a, a, just a stock photo from the, the app that I used to make this presentation. Oh, okay. I thought they were pretty. They are pretty. Yeah, they may not be Cortland's, but they look kind of like them. Hello. Hi. Hi there. I was trying to upload my um, recipe, but I can't get it to go, so I might have to type it in later. Okay. What's your favorite? It's actually from um, A Taste of Home years ago. It's called, um, oh boy, it's, called, it's just called Apple Loaf, but we put about two cups of apples in each loaf, so with some applesauce. It's really good. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Is the chat function just not opening for you? Um, I can't share. I just took a picture of it and I can't share it. So I can see it. I just can't copy paste in there. So oh. okay. I'll keep trying. 
I'm not the best at these meetings, so. And this is my first time hosting one, so I'm hoping <laughs> it's not some setting that I did, but I think it's the, uh, I think everyone can. Yeah, no, I can hear and see everything. Okay. So. Are you going to be um, cooking along with us today? Yes, I was hoping to. Awesome. I'll probably just do one more minute. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do you have anyone else joining us? Right. Where are you from, Christine? Uh, Waverly. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm from Fall City, so I'm in Waverly. Oh, very awesome. nice. Yeah. Small world. Yeah. <laughs> and Arlene's right in between the two of us. Nashua. Okay. Yeah. By Nashua. <laughs> Nashua. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with the presentation. Um, we are recording this, so this first part will be kind of more of something that I may share out um, with the demonstration the lesson a little bit. And then we'll turn the recording off and just kind of get together and a little more. Okay. A little less formal. Okay. So, um, started here. Okay, so since we have Arlene on, she I'll let her introduce herself and we're going to go through some questions about cooking and eating apples. So, Arlene, would you like to introduce yourself before we get started with the questions? Okay, I think my internet might be a little unstable, but did you ask me to introduce myself? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Oh, so I guess, Christine, you're the only other participant. So my husband and I own Apples on the Avenue Orchard, which is outside of Nashua, right on the highway. Okay. So I'm originally from Fertile, which is north of uh, Clear Lake. My folks farm there. And we've owned the orchard since 2014. So this is our seventh season as the owners. Like for ISU Extension. So my husband and I both have off-farm jobs in addition to orchard. Okay, great. Yeah. So Arlene, um, not just for Christine, but for sharing this out later too with some information we can learn from you. Um, when you go to start cooking and baking with apples, how do you know which ones are best? Yeah, that's great. So um, every apple, I mean, does have its own qualities. Like there are some that are softer flesh and some that are more firm and of course sweet versus tart. Um, so I think you really have to kind of know each individual apple, but for baking, people usually like something that's more tart. Um, so for what, for what we grow at our orchard, we have wealthies kind of at the beginning of the season around Labor Day that are very popular. And then right now we have Cortland's and Harrelson's, which are both very popular for baking. Um, Harrelson's are quite tart. Cortland's are kind of in the middle in terms of sweet tartness. Um, but you can also bake with sweet apples. It just depends on a person's preference, right? Um, but a lot of people like that, like a tart apple because they're gonna be adding sugar. So it's like that sweet tart combination. Um, for fresh eating, again, it's a lot of like personal preference. Um, of the apples that we grow, Honeycrisp of course is like everybody's favorite. You can get that in the grocery store too. But then of the apples that you maybe haven't heard of, um, Firesides. Are really popular. They're big, crisp, sweet. Um, I think they have a the flavor has a little bit of a hint of banana to it. Mm. And then Regents, um, they are actually a cross of a Red Delicious with something else. So they look a little bit like a Red Delicious. How they have the, kind of like that conical shape, kind of like a narrow bottom, um, but they taste way better than a Red Delicious. <laughs> um, they're sweet crisp, and um, I think they have a hint of strawberry in the flavor. Mm. So those are some of our favorites. Um, what the, kind was that, did you say? I'm sorry. Regent. Regent. That and sounds amazing. My husband just picked a few for the first time this season yesterday, um, but we'll probably wait to pick the rest of them for another, I'm guessing, another week or two. We actually really like to have a frost before we start picking them. He yes. picks week though because we had a school order and they were just the right size for school <laughs> anyway um and then for cooking Mallory were you referring to like like applesauce type cooking 
Um, yeah, more like uh, like savory, uh, savory versus sweet. Oh, okay. Hmm. I'm not fully sure. Yeah, I'm tonight sure I uh, I'm making a, a salad, a side salad for our dinner tonight, and I'm going to be doing an apple cheddar, um, like oh. salad. So it's going to be you know a little bit more of a savory dish. With so I'm. I was kind of like, I don't know what would taste good in this. I'd probably just put a few different kinds of apples. But. Mm -hmm. A lot of people for salads specifically like Cortland's because they have a white flesh and they don't turn so brown. Like they don't really turn brown. They just get a little bit yellow, but not so brown like other varieties. Um, and then I think it kind of depends too, like if you want an apple that breaks down quickly, like if you want something that gets mushy or you want something that stays kind of firm. Um, so that kind of depends on the hardness of the apple. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. And then when you guys are harvesting apples, I know you guys sell to grocery stores and you have, you know, pre-picked apples in addition to, um, you know, the you pick style. So when you're harvesting apples, what do you look for? For how do you know when they're ready? Oh yeah. So um, you know an apple is ready by cutting it open and looking at the seeds. If the, the seeds are still white, it's not right. If they're kind of a, a brown or black, a lot of times they're kind of like a brown with like a little bit of a reddish color to them, that, that is ripe. So we actually go more by the seed color than anything. Um, but you also can taste, if there's any kind of starchiness, kind of like, like if it feels like it's sticking to your teeth, it's not ripe yet. Um, it should, there shouldn't be any starchiness to it when you pick it. Um, so that's how we know that it's ripe. And then there, for certain varieties, color matters. So for some varieties, they'll start turning red or like we have a honey gold apple that's yellow and it gets just a little bit of like a pink blush to it when it's ripe. But for other apple varieties, color doesn't matter. Like we have a variety called Spartan that's kind of a burgundy color. It's almost purple. Those ones are purple in the middle of the summer, but they're not ripe. Right. The color just doesn't matter on those ones. Um, and then for some apples, we have one variety specifically where size does matter. Like for on fire sides, the small ones just don't have good flavor. So um, we we tell people not to even pick the little ones, just go. Interesting. I definitely did not know all of that. Especially, yeah. I think I would just look for what's turning colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the tricky thing is, especially with you pickers, we have certain varieties that people pick them all season because they're beautiful and they're red and they think they're right, but they're not. <laughs> right. Um, hard not to pick them because they look right. Will apples continue to ripen after you pick them? Yeah, well, they will. And so that's why we suggest that people keep them in the fridge that will slow down the ripening. ripening. Um, they also sell bag, like plastic bags that often have like a yellow or blue. That essentially, I think they like absorb the ethylene gas that fruit gives off to help them to keep longer. Um, so like the worst place to keep an apple is on your counter. Like the whole, that, that fruit bowl on the table thing, that's the worst place to keep an apple because it's going to keep ripening and it's going to get mushy on you. Um, Good stuff. Learning lots of new things. Okay. Okay, amazing. Okay, and then what is your favorite apple recipe? Or do you guys uh, get sick of apples? <laughs> um, we don't really get sick of apples. You know what? Even in the off season, when we run out of apples, my husband buys apples more. <laughs> We don't really get sick of apples. Um, oh. Sorry, there was a crash in the other room. The table where my son is doing Legos just tipped. Darren, can you grab the plant? And the plant just fell on the floor. Sorry. It's okay, I can relate. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the question, favorite apple recipe. I actually just like plain apple crisp. Um, I put the recipe in the chat box for you. Oh, the topping really needs to have oatmeal for it to be good. For sure. All right. So, is everything okay there? Are you, can you talk a little bit about the equipment? 
so is it okay if I kind of, um, yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll go off the picture you got and then I, I'll walk to the kitchen and show you the strainer. So, um, so yeah, so we do sell some equipment at our orchard. Um, so later, I think Mallory's going to show you how the, an app, the, The fuller core slicer works so you don't have Oh, okay. I'm going to turn off my video. Maybe that will improve the connection. Sounds Can better. Now? Okay. Yep. Yep. So I was just saying that the peeler core slicer is really nice if you're doing pies. Um, and you can use it for sauce too. Um, um, and you can also pull back the peeling part so that it doesn't peel and it just slices. Um, sometimes people do that if they're dehydrating apples. And I really, it's really nice for dehydrating because all of your apple slices are the exact same thickness. So they should, will all dehydrate like in the same amount of time. Um, the other piece of equipment that we sell is, well, it says Johnny Applesauce Maker. It's kind of funny. They used to just call it a food strainer, but they've rebranded. But um, this is a Victorio food strainer. And we have one in our kitchen that's probably from like the 80s or the 90s that we bought on a garage sale. And when my husband bought it, um, it like, it was like a game changer because I used to be able to do maybe if I was going to make applesauce, I might be able to make like one bushel of apples into sauce in a day and get it canned. And now I can do like two or three bushels in a day. It's just, it's just way faster than using the old fashioned strainer that's like cone shaped. Um, and so the reason we started selling these was because I have one in my own kitchen and I love it. Um, so, um, the thing about the strainer is going to make a lot of sauce. This is like the most important piece of equipment. And you also can get strainers that go on, um, what are they called? Sorry. Um, uh, a KitchenAid mixer. It's an attachment you can get for a KitchenAid. But anyway, for our strainer, um, when you make the sauce, you don't have to peel the apples first and you don't have to cut the seeds out. So you just wash your apples and then you quarter them and then cook them down in a pot with a little bit of water. And when they get soft, you pour them into the top of the strainer. On the picture, it shows like some tomatoes in there. I don't know why it's showing tomatoes with stems. I don't think you would do it that way, but anyway. Um, you pour the sauce in the top and you crank it and then the sauce comes out the white shoot and then that clear shoot, the seeds and peels and stems come out that shoot. So it's just so fast because you don't have to do any peeling or even cutting your seeds out. Um, it is kind of a pain to clean it though when you're done. Um, so I probably wouldn't use it if I was just making a small batch of sauce like what Mallory is going to do today. Um, but if I was going to do like a bushel and do a bunch of canning or freezing, I would definitely use a strainer. Do you want me to show you the strainer? I can walk over to my kitchen and turn video back on. Yeah, that'd be good to uh, get a good idea of the size of it. It's um, sure. actually quite manageable. Yeah, and the newer version, the new ones that we sell are smaller than the older version that I have in my kitchen. But I, I'm actually gonna show you the new version right now. My old one is up in my cupboard. Um, Okay, so we might have to do a little adjusting, but I'm just gonna set the computer on the counter and then we may have to adjust so that you can actually see it. Okay, so okay, so that's the strainer. I'm just gonna move my screen so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay. How's that? You Good. See it? Yep. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so the actual size of it, let me just like put my hand here so you can kind of get the idea of like compared to a person's hand how big it is, right? Um, so compared to a bag of apples, there you go, you can kind of see the size. So um, yeah, so you just put the sauce in here, there are the apples that have been cooked down, you crank it, then sauce comes out right here and falls into the bowl. Your peelings fall into this bowl right there. Yeah, I don't know if that's much of a demonstration, but <laughs> there you go. No, have. that's great. Yeah, thank you. 
I think some people think that you know, this type of equipment is really large and unnecessary, but we just processed like 30 pounds of tomatoes with ours and did it in like 10 minutes. So I was like, yeah, for me, it's worth the space that it takes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And I see you have a electric motor. Can you add that right on to an existing one? Yeah, so the, the, the new ones, you can put a motor onto it, and the new ones, you can also change out the screen for, like, they have a salsa screen and a pumpkin screen, so they're basically just different size screens, so if you want um, some chunks to be coming through, um, you could use the old version, you cannot change out the screen. So, but yeah, the motor, I actually have a motor, I should have set it up. Um, my husband used it the motor last winter when he was doing like 12 bushels of apples into sauce and he really liked it because that way he could like dump the stuff in turn the motor on and walk away and continue working um, yeah so i wish i had known about those motors my my husband uh he just kind of made one um it's a long story but now i'm like oh man i wish i'd known there was a motor because he just like, he liked the little thing and whatever. It made quick work though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think crank cranking is that bad, especially if you have kids, like kids really enjoy cranking it. My kids yes, do. they do. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. Okay, so let's start talking ingredients and equipment and maybe transition into getting the demonstration started. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Arlene. And thank you for all that awesome information. Um, and hopefully next year we can do the, the same kind of thing on your farm. So. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Right on the farm next year. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of get started here. And Christine, if you are here or if you need a couple more minutes, let me know. Um, I'll just start talking about ingredients. Now. Sure, oh, I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay, so I do have um, the ingredient list that I posted, I did go to get the Harrelsons and Cortlands from um, Apples on the Avenue. So three sweet and three tart. And I'm going to stop recording now.